All right, let's switch gears here. Let's get cracking. There we go. Hello, everyone. A little bit different camera angle. I uh, changed a little bit of the setup. Hope you like it. Um, looks a little different, but hopefully it's fine. And let's immediately jump over here because this is what we want to look at. And now nah, I don't like what that looks bad. To get that a little further apart. There we go. I think that's fine. All right. Hello, everyone. Hey, Josh. So another quick look at a new product that has been released today. Uh, I just want to quickly post the link for that after the Cubase Quick Load V Pro template. Now the Studio One version available now. Hey Twitch Evans, welcome. And yes, so without further ado, let's jump straight in and have a quick look at what this is about. So the Cubase and Studio One Quick Load template have been living in the shop for quite a while. And I was oftentimes asked to, uh, if I could do like a Viano Ensemble Pro template. And it's kind of a little bit tricky to make that as accessible for everyone as possible, because the problem with that is that, of course, everyone has different libraries and wants to use different libraries. I mean, the Quickler template initially had the same approach of being uh, universally, universally compatible uh, with whatever libraries you have with you cultivating your quick load database with the libraries that you have on your system. So this takes kind of the same approach, but incorporates Beyond Ensemble Pro into the whole process and shall serve as a starting point for you if you feel uncomfortable with VN Ensemble Pro or you're not sure with the routings and everything. This is all taken care of, but it still involves a little time and effort on your end to make it your template because the VN Ensemble Pro frames that I will show uh, in a bit are empty. There's nothing in there. There's all placeholders for your instruments and you need to cultivate that with your libraries that you want to use and save that and then you can start cracking so to say so without further ado let's jump in and have a quick look at that when you get the studio one quick load v pro template it comes with these folders uh the quick load folder for setting up your local contact quick load database uh, more about that and I want, don't want to go in too much into detail on the quick load part of the template because that's already done with the quick load template. If you want to know more about that, you can find the video in the description and I will also link it, I guess, up there in the corner. And more importantly, what you will find is the four different song presets or song uh, projects. And I did two versions. It's basically the same. Just one utilizes uh, Slate Virtual Mix Rack on every channel in a default state, so to say. So you can, whenever you want to tweak a channel, you have the Slate Virtual Mix Rack uh, directly available. So you don't need to load anything. And also a version without. So with no plugins on the insert channels. There is a manual included. I also included visibility macros for the template. We will look at that within Studio One and of course all the VE Pro frames that I will talk about in a second. So all we got to do is uh, I'm fine with having the Slate version loaded and I will pretty much do the process as you would do it on your own system. So the first thing you got to do is you have to open this project. So let me go to 
the templates. Studio One Quick Load V Pro. This is pretty much, well, you won't see the zip file because that's the content of the zip file. So, and we are going to load the Studio One Quick Load V Pro with Slate VMR and both of these versions with and without VMR also come with the local instances of contact of the template disabled if you uh, want to save a little bit of RAM on your system. So you can also disable local instruments or load them disabled. I'm fine with loading the full version, so let's go ahead. This may take a little moment, so we will load the full template. It's around 500 tracks. And the, the core concept behind it is that every single instrument in VE Pro corresponds to its individual audio return channel in Studio One. So you don't have to worry about multi timbral settings in contact or where different instruments in contact are routed to. One contact is one instrument. And you can lay it down the line decide if you want to use key switchable instruments on some of these uh, instances or just straight single instruments. That really depends on your workflow and what you prefer to do. The reason being is when you route a single MIDI channel that goes to the Pro back as an audio channel, you can interconnect them within Studio One. So you have immediately all the different mixing options available for every channel that you select. So if you select my violins one legato in the inspector, you will immediately see the violins one legato audio channel. That's the whole purpose of this template. So once it's done loading, it will not be connected. So what we haven't done yet is we haven't opened VR Ensemble Pro. So Although it is technically possible if you have a decently specced computer to run Studio One and VE Pro on the same system side by side, I highly recommend to use a Slave computer if you have one. So to have the instruments hosted outside of your main computer, because that's kind of what gives you the best performance with this template. So as you can see, this is what it looks like when you load it. Nothing's in there, and when we quickly look at the instruments, these starting here are the quick load instances, and these five up here are the Viano Ensemble Pro instances. And the problem, well, not the problem, right now, as it would happen on your system when you open this up for the first time, it's quite a lot of folders here. Let's close that a little bit to make it more easy to see. So right now when we open this instrument, it says that it's not connected, that the connection failed because we haven't initiated any Vion Ensemble Pro instance yet. Like I said, I prefer to run VE Pro on a slave computer. This is my uh, slave computer. It's an AMD Ryzen 1950X with 128 gigabytes of RAM. So after we have loaded the Studio One com, uh, project, I opened up the instance of Yarn Ensemble Pro. And the whole system with VE Pro is set up in a way if you have multiple slave computers, you can distribute the load onto different computers. So there is one complete, these are five instances of the Ensemble Pro. And there's one frame included in the download that contains all five instances, or you also can load individual instances. So for example, put strings and brass on one computer, woodwinds and percussion on another, and the auxiliary on a third one. Or for example, the auxiliary on your main computer. If you intend to load individual instances, all you got to do in VN Ensemble Pro is click that little plus button. And then you can go to instance, open project. And then we don't want to save the one we just created. And then you see all these five instances available here, strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion and auxiliary. Uh, let's quickly just load the strings 
into this. And that's it. It's done already. So these are the contact instances for the strings. Since I am running all the instruments from the same vpro instance, uh, from the vpro server, I'm going to load the full project with all five instances. So let's click that. And now it's loading the strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion and auxiliary side by side. And that's it. It's done already. Because like I said, all these instances that you can see here are placeholders. And I will explain in a moment what that means and what you have to do to make that working for you. So let's close the slave here and just connect these individual instances. So when I now click on connect, I'm on the strings instance here. When I click on connect, it now shows me the instances that I have loaded on my slave computer. So I can connect the strings and I go to the brass, click on connect, connect to the brass, go to the woodwinds, connect it to the woodwinds. Go to my percussion, connect it to percussion. Then I go to my auxiliaries and connect it to my aux. So, and as you can see on the slide here now, with this little symbol, with that plug, you can see that these instances are now connected. Okay, let's take a quick look at the instances, what is inside here. So again, I have to repeat that once more. When you load this project, you will not get any sound out of this because all these instances here are empty contact instances. So let's get rid of this. So the violin one legato, for example, from string library one. Longs, short, pizzicato, special articulations. Let's say, for example, you own cinematic studio strings and you want to use CSS in your template. What you would do is you would go to violin one legato and load the violins into this patch. And you could either leave it as is. I personally pref prefer to uh, unload the other articulations that are not needed for this one. So now I have here just my legatos. Then I would do the same on the long. Again, unload the other ones and just put the legato off so we get the stains here. On short, I'm going to load the violins again. Put that on staccato and unload all the other ones. I don't need them on this one. And last but not least, pizzicato, same thing. I think you get the idea of how this is going to work. Going to, uh, ba -ba -ba. sorry, this one. And I'm going to pizzicato and unload all the other ones that I don't need. So there we go. And special articulations uh, is, for example, you could put the tremolos and the trills on this one. Let's put the tremolos on here just for the time being to make that clear. So now we have violin one legato, sustains, short, pizzicatos and tremolo, for example, as special articulations. What the first thing that you want to do when you do this is to resave the server project as your uh, cultivated or whatever you want to call it. So I call it cultivated, which means I'm starting to load instruments into the template. So back to Studio One. You now see, let's open that up a little bit. So you see these folders. First of all, how it's generally structured. Every folder, every instrument group folder contains a Vienna Ensemble Pro folder. Well, most of them, not all of them. Hey, Abakachi, by the way. And a quick load folder. 
The quick load folder relates to the initial idea of the quick load template that you have local instances of contact that you can open up and load instruments directly through the quick load menu. I will come to that why it's still included in the VE Pro template in a little bit. So, but let's go to the VE Pro folder. It's now named Your String Library 1. As I've just said, we loaded Cinematic Studio Strings into the first slot. So what I would do if I decide to use Cinematic Studio Strings for the first string library to use in my template here, I would rename this to Cinematic Studio Strings. Could either do it like this. It is this is really up to you. And if I now go to the violin legato, I technically should hear the cinematic studio strings legatos. And we do. And on the second channel. I now have the longs, and on the third one, I have the shorts. And the pizzicatos on the fourth one. Let me actually turn down the music here. That for now. So. And on the last one, we had the tremolo. All right, so first section, so to say, is done. Just a quick explanation, why do we have five different returns? It can oftentimes happen that you want to, for example, let's put some reverb on the long strings. Like I said in the beginning, everything is set up already. We have the string reverb loaded. I'm using Valhalla vintage verb here. Morning, Murat. Um, if you don't, if you happen to not have the included effects that we will find in the effects channels here, you can see them here. All these channels that are marked with an X are the effects sense. And we have pretty much reverb and delay per instrument group. So if you happen to not have the Valhalla Vintage Verb, for example, you will get an error message by, upon opening the project that the plugin is missing. And all you got to do then is just to re, um, replace with your favorite plugin that you want to use. If you happen to have Valhalla Vintage Verb, you will have these settings already loaded. So on the Violin Ligado, let's say we want to have like minus... 10 of reverb. So, and for example, and that's why we have a different audio return for the shorts. If I would have the same reverb here with minus 10, sometimes It can be a little bit too much. So by separating these returns from these instruments, you could dial back the reverb on the shorts a little. You could have the pizzicato bone dry if you like that. Or very wet, depending on what you're working on and what you need. So, and back to the Vienna Ensemble Pro frame. Let's quickly, let's say we want to add the cellos as well. So we repeat that same process, loading the cellos. And you don't need to worry about media routings or anything. Everything is pre-set up. I also included, just as an explanation, what these numbers here mean. Uh, because in Vienna Ensemble Pro, you can either have this view where you see the MIDI ports and the channels and the outputs, or that small view, which I prefer. So I included 
the MIDI port and the channel and the output on the individual instruments. So you can, with one view, see, okay, this is uh, port three, channel one, returning on 2122. This is port four, channel five, returning on 3940. So back to the cello. Let's load the sustain here, uh, the legato. Uh, let's say I don't need for now the sustain, just the shorts. Then I can load the cellos again. And also again, get rid of everything I don't need. So now I just have the shorts here. And for, for example, in Cinematic Studio Strings, you still have these four different articulations uh, right now connected to the uh, well, on the strings, uh, on the violins, it was connected to the mod wheel. Initially, when you didn't change anything in the library, this is connected to the mod wheel, like this. So oh, I need to go to channel. This cello's short, so now it's learned. Yeah. So this is the initial setting of the library. All right, so we have the cello legato. And the cello short. And a quickly, quickly an explanation about the whole idea behind it. So you have your string library one, then you have your string library two. And by the way, what I would also do is resave the project under a different file name as well. Uh, so Quicklow VMR cultivated, so you're safe to not override the initial state of the template with your settings. So, for example, you have cinematic studio strings for the first library. My initial thought was that should be more than enough, but then I thought if you have a decent enoughly spec'd system behind that, and like, like I have, for example, 128 gigabytes of RAM on the slave, Sometimes you may want to include like a chamber string library and a regular symphonic sized library, or you have just your favorite two string libraries that you definitely want to have in the template. That's why I repeated the process and have two folders for two different full string libraries, meaning violin one, two, viola, celli, and basses. And besides that, then we also have, oftentimes you need ensemble patches, so you could go to slave, take the ensemble patches, and for example, let's say we want to use uh, the nucleus ensembles. And we go here into the strings, full strings, uh, sustained. Let's say I get rid of the reverb. And also have my CC7A. What I would recommend once you start to cultivate your template, uh, on some occasions it might be useful to rename these tracks so you know what's on them. So you could, for example, if you say just put a little nuke in front, then you know nuclear string ensemble long. You could even remove the O1 at the end. So this is Nucleus Strings Long. Then I have the same for some string solos. So for example, if you say I want to use the Tina Guo legato in my template, you could go to the string solos, add a low instrument. Say we want to use the regular Tina Guo legato. And as you can see, when you drag the instrument onto the existing instruments that we have here, it already has the MIDI channel assigned, so you don't need to worry about that. So the only thing you need to keep in mind is to drag the instrument onto the empty instrument that is loaded. 
And immediately we have the Teenage Duo, Ligado, and with if you have the virtual mix track, for example. You can immediately jump into tweaking the sound to your liking if you say I want to have less bass information on this instrument. Drag in a little bit of an EQ here. And every channel comes already pre-made with reverb and also a delay. If you want to, for example, for some special effects, put some delay. The more. So that was just the strings, but let's uh, check out, for example, if we want to go into the auxiliary. So you might have your favorite piano that you always use and don't want to load every time when you're working. So let's, for example, say we load the Noir standard piano and I have included two piano tracks. So you could also load the, the felt, for example. These are your favorite pianos. And again, both come th back into Studio One through different audio returns. So when we go to the keys, we have Piano One. Or you say, let's actually name this. This is Noir. And this is Noir Felt. Could immediately bring in some black holes, some delay on the piano and put a little bit of compression on it. So ready to go. Say compression a little down ratio as release and like I said, everything is set up so you can immediately start working. The only thing you need to do, and this is the part of the work for this template that I just cannot take from you, is to invest the time one time to cultivate the V Pro frame with your instruments that you want to use. So in the percussion section, I included a bunch of regular cost. Uh, uh, orchestral percussions, everything three times. So three lows, three mids, three snares, three high, three metal, three cymbals. Then we have a bunch of orchestral tune percussion, crotalus, glockenspiel, celeste, xylophone, vibraphone, marimba, tubular belts, and timpani. And then also some epic percussion. Same thing again, uh, everything three times. And I also want to utilize this moment to explain why actually the combination of the pro and strings. So let's say you have your string library one and two and your ensembles uh, set up and then you work on a track and you realize, damn, I would want to use uh, older for Arnold's uh, strings in this one, which are not part of the template. This is where the quick load portion comes into play. So the quick load instruments are for all the occasions when you run into the situation that you want to use instruments outside of the VPro hosted ones. So 
Try to imagine the V Pro portion as like your core template, what you always tend to use, the sounds that you regular go to, regularly go to, and the quick load as the icing on the cake where you can add, immediately add additional instruments that you just want to use on a song specific basis. So if we say we go to the strings, Spitfire, uh, all of Arnold's evolutions. Hopefully I'm not killing myself right now with the instruments not being available. Oh, they are. <laughs> okay. So, and then you can... Hi, Peter. Yeah, this will, of course, be available later. I actually intend to use this kind of a little bit of a manual as well for the product on the product page. Um, there are a few sections of the template where I did not include Vienna instruments, like, for example, for the ethno section. So it's just uh, I didn't want to fully overload the full template with everything available. So if you required to utilize ethnic instruments, the easiest way to do so will be on utilizing the quick load instruments. So if you say I have an ethnic woodwind that I want to use, then I could go into my quick load ethnic folder, uh, for example, Embertone and say, okay, I want to use the Jubal flute on this one with a little bit of reverb and a little bit of black hole. So, and then this is loaded locally, and I could technically just rename it Ambitone Jubal, so I know what instruments, uh, what instrument is included in this track. And piece by piece, that way you can cultivate the V Pro frame. What you got to do is, of course, once you're done is save the full server project. And again, when you when you happen to have multiple computers, like two slaves and a main machine, this does not need to sit all on one machine. You, can't, you could have the VPro strings and brass just on the slave system, and for example, the woodwinds percussion and auxiliary on your main. And you can also change that uh, later down the line. You can just disconnect this instance, load the auxiliary locally on your machine, and then connect it from there. So one thing that I want to add, this whole tablet is, is, is the idea behind is to give you a starting point, to give you a fully set up working environment with all the connections in place. If we take quickly a look at the group routings here. Let's take a look at the mixer as well. So on the left, you see both combined the Vienna Ensemble Pro returns and also the local instruments, the quick load instruments that are part of the initial template. Everything is routed to either string high, in this case the strings, if we go over to the groups, there we go, we have a group of string, it's better to see actually down here. So here we go. It's the so-called the summing tier. So we have string high long, String high short, string low long, string low short, strings long, which is a full ensemble patch, and strings short. And then we have solo string high and solo string low. So there is an integrated busing system where everything is pre routed and set in place. I will explain in a minute or in a little bit later uh, what advantage, uh, advantage <laughs> this gives you. Uh, once you're done writing your queue. Also, hopefully with the full template then uh, 
set up so that you have your pianos and strings and brass and woodwinds. One thing that I also want to explain, I've included next to the individual libraries and the ensembles and the solos, I also included combo patches down here. And this is really like thinking of uh, libraries like Spitfire Albions and uh, Audio Imperia has included a lot of combined ensemble patches. Symphobia comes to mind. So all these libraries that have like pre-made sections so, for example, when I think of Albion 1, or also other Albion libraries, um, they often come with like high strings, sometimes mid strings, and low strings. <laughs> Listen to nerdy stuff again. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is a little bit nerdy, but it is very helpful in the long run. Um, so, for example, on the strings, we could say we want to use the strings high octave legato. And then we have the string high shorts, so we could go to Albion again and load the individual patches, strings, short, string, where, where are they? Where are my strings high short? I think the strings high, by the way, are not initial part of the album library. I think I uh, worked on these in separate. I went into them and uh, just deleted the lower portion below C2. So I have my high strings. But ba -da, we go to the string ensemble combos. So on the high one, I had Albion 1, Spitfire, Albion 1, String Ensemble, Gato. Should be... Something's off here. Did I find a bug? No, I just need to play higher. <laughs> okay, I had an octave switch on. Okay, it's working. And then on the shorts, we have the... Again, I would need to rename that. The structure on the brass is exactly the same. It follows the structure from above. So we have your brass library number one, brass library number two, ensembles, solos, and combos. And if you, for example, say, let's take the horns as an example. Not every brass library that is out there that you possibly own is reflected in this setup that I gave you here. So, for example, if you use Cinebrass and have the six horns loaded, and let's go to brass, go to brass library one, into the horns legato, and we want to use the six horns from Cinebrass. So I can go here, I can go to my six horns and load the legato into the legato. Makes sense, right? To put the legato patch into the legato patch. So now I could also rename that. This is Cinesample, Cinebrass, Horns. If I want to ver be very precise, I could even put the number here, Horn 6 legato. So. Fadi, quick explanation. Uh, I made the test myself. So when you host, when you say you have 100 instances of contact and you host everything within Cubase or Studio One, 
Um, my experience is that I can even put that in numbers. So with a about 100 track template with contact with Cinematic Studio Spring, Cinebras and stuff like that loaded, when I outsource that into VE Pro, even on the same system, my CPU meter, well, not CPU meter, the ASIO meter in Cubase went down by approximately 25%. So you just free up resources within Cubase to take care of its initial job, which is recording and arranging and all that stuff, instead of having all the instruments hosted in Cubase. Again, I highly recommend this setup for an actual dual system setup like a master and a slave computer. It makes more sense, but nevertheless, in my experience, it also makes sense to have the instruments even on a local Beyond Ensemble Pro frame outsourced out of Cubase or Studio One or whatever DAW you're working with. And not only the performance boost or the performance stability that uh, the DAW, in my experience, gains from that, it's also the fact that you can more easily switch between, uh, between projects. File size is a big issue as well. If you have every instrument inside Cubase or Studio One, the file size can blow up significantly the more instruments you add. If you host the instruments outside of the DAW, first of all, the file size of the project gets way smaller, significantly smaller. And if you change in between projects, you don't have the wait time to have all the instruments load within Cubase or in Studio One again, but only to load the MIDI tracks and then it connects to the VE Pro frame, which is already loaded. So there is a bunch, in my experience, there's a bunch of advantages of even running V Pro next to the DAW in a one computer setup. Finally, in the end, everyone has to uh, find that out for oneself. If it's a performance optimization or if it runs better than within the DAW. My experience over time for quite a while, it makes sense to even in a one computer setup to, to run VE Pro on the side, depending on the fact if you actually intend to use larger templates and want to have a bunch of sounds preloaded. Hope that answers the question. Scambot, the number of drives does not really have anything to do with that, but I try to to um, I try to uh, I think I just answered that. So I think it makes sense on a one computer system as well. Um, it might be with the amount that I have set this up that uh, it can be more taxing. What you can do is if you run it on a one computer setup and say you don't actually need that much channel power, could also, for example, just go with the first library and delete all the others. And then also within Studio One, deactivate the audio returns that you don't need. So last but not least, uh, what one of the major selling points for me is now, and that's why I did this in Studio One now, and that's why I also require uh, Studio One 5.5 for this uh, project, is that they have significantly, uh, significantly improved their visibility options. The template comes with a macro bar that you can see on the top here uh, that I have included in the download, which gives you a full visibility control over all the individual instruments. So when you look at these instruments, you see these little markers A, B in, in brackets on all these tracks. And what this does basically is allows me to select instrument groups based on their marker. So I can say, I just want to see the low brass. And I click this and look at this, boom. Now I only see my low brass channels, everything that is trombones, tuba, low ensembles, etc. If that's too wide on screen, you could also use these 
little entries here in the menu to change the height. And I actually put that onto key switches. So I'm using my Stream Deck XL for that. And I can change the zoom with just the click of a button. And what I can also do, if we look at the group settings here, in my system, I have put all of these macros onto key commands in Studio One. You can see them here in case you want to take them over. I think three or four of these were adjusted to other um, functions that I felt just I don't need. So I've just overwrote them. And uh, what this allows me to do is to put these key commands on my Stream Deck and now I can, I don't know if you can really see that. Let me quickly do this. So here I have all my instrument groups color coded on my Stream Deck. So what that means is I can hit my string high button and I see just my high strings. Or I can click on my string low button and I see just my low strings. Or string ensemble, then I just see my ensemble strings. And as you can see, the nucleus ensemble we have just set up. So then go to the, we had the brass high, there we had the horns legato. And the same thing, everything is set up. Now when you want some reverb on the brass and for example, want to give it a little bit of air. And maybe some compression to give it some dirt. These can actually use quite a bit of compression. You could even put like, put your drive. And compare that without. So that's for the for the brass and uh, you can also go back to like I set it up in a way you could also show just the strings and brass combined. So we have the strings and the brass and then you can of course go back to show all tracks. That's the button that takes the longest still in Studio One. Uh, that is a little faster in Cubase but um, it gets you back to the full view of all tracks. So, and closes the folders as well. Just realized. So now let's, for the last part, look at the summing tier and the stemming tier and what that means. So like I said, we have the string, the brass, so trumpets and horns go to brass high, from bones, tubers go to brass low. And then we have brass ensemble patches, same for woodwinds. Bunch of different percussion channels and then keys, synth, guitars, etc. So the reason being, when you, for example, write something that you send out to a mixer to have it mixed, sometimes you don't want to do the individual channels, it's fine to have these combined channels. So you don't need a violin one short and violin one uh, or violin one legato and violin long separated. So you have these string highs long and on the occasion that you need to send stuff out to mixer to have it mixed externally. Usually what you want to have is the tracks dry without reverb or anything because the mixing engineer usually applies these kind of effects. So the reverb that we just used, for example, for the piano 
Now we used it on the felt. So these effect tails that you can hear only appear on the final stem of the keys. So if I solo, I don't know if that's working right now. If I solo just the piano. And we still hear it because it... Uh, <laughs> you have to believe me on that. When you... Well, I can actually show it to you. So let's do this. So, we have a little snippet here. To do that. So, let's take this. If I... Ex let's extend that a little bit. So, if I export this. So, I go to Song. Export Mix Down. So, I could... Actually, I don't want to export the mix down. I don't want to export the stereo track. I want to export a stem. So I go to export stems. So what I can do now is, first of all, I can deselect everything. And if I export the stem, just the keys that we just did, um, I put it here. And I want to imp uh, import it back into the track. So let's quickly export this. So this will be something, if you have written your track, it would send it away to your publisher. So importing back into the track. So now we have here the piano. including the tail and the send effect that we used. If I were to send this off to a mixer, what you can do then is song export stems. And instead of the final stem, you can export the summing tier. Use these keys. I do the same thing, export it and import it into the track. And what happens now Hello Daniela and hello Brian. Let me get back to this question in a second. So now we have the piano empty because I muted it. Did I mute it? What happened? Why is this empty? That doesn't make sense. Uh, let's try that again. Track. Actually remove this as well. Okay. Oh, I, I know why, because I exported the key track instead of the piano track. So once more, so export mix down, no, export stem. You see that I'm more used to Cubase than Studio One, to be honest. Uh, so export stem and instead of the keys, we actually want to export the piano. Okay, now it should be fine. Dwayne, I have not really switched. Um, well, technically I do. I, I do have switched as well because I have a bunch of stuff that I've been working in uh, Studio One lately. Uh, and most importantly, because of Studio One 5.5, which has um, significantly upgraded their visibility uh, functions. And now you got me on the wrong food. Why? Oh, yeah, we should mute this. 
Now you can hear, there's no tail. So, <laughs> I quickly thought I messed that up. No, it's fine. So let's delete this, remove track. So the idea behind is in the stemming tier, you have all the reverb settings that you set up, and this is the same as in the Cubase template. But in the summing tier, the reverbs and delays are not included. So pretty much you have the individual channels that is muted right now. Going into the summing tier here, piano one. And from here, I'm sending this to the reverbs. And the reverbs get sent only to the stemming tier directly. And this gets forwarded to the stemming tier as well. So here we have then the dry signal and the affected signal combined. That was very nerdy, sorry for that, but I hope you get the idea. But that's the same as in the initial Quickload template as well, so this is very similar and familiar. And again, with the visibility options, once you fill that up, you can immediately jump to different sections. If I say I need that uh, solo cello that I just did, then I can just jump in here. No, I and jump in here. There it was. I didn't name it. And if I want to bring I don't have a key switch for every combination here, but say I want to see the pianos as well. What I can do is hit a comma and put down the N and then I see my keys as well. So I can have my felt piano. Let's quickly record something here. That's a little fast. Let's go to 140 or no. 110. Okay, kind of like this. Quantize that a little bit. Cut that, duplicate, Oops. duplicate, go. So now I can put the cello on top, solo cello, and like I said, we forgot to name it. So let's name this Sin Samples Tina Guo String Solo Low. call that a day. Done. And now let's say I need my high strings. So I could go to my cinematic studio string shorts. That's a little dry. Maybe we want some delay on these. And I need to put that minus 60 delay on these tracks.
I mean, that's <laughs> kind of hilarious, but you get the idea. So we have eighth notes. Quantize that quickly. Take that off. Did we load any percussion yet? We didn't, but we loaded the... The local instrument with a flute. One reverb seems a little excessive. So what we can do is uh, let me go back to all instruments, which is the one that takes the longest. And bring in, do, 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 go back to the piano. And by the way, if you have a piano and you just uh, feel very you can also do this and then you can immediately jump just to the piano. Or not, because I have this little... Sorry, my bad. There we go. So the felt has a little much reverb on the black hole, so I just dialed it back a little. And then I can get rid of that. And I'm back showing all my tracks, I guess. A lot of the stuff is hidden, so let's bring that back. So now I have And finally, when I'm done with writing, of course, I can say just show me the active tracks, meaning just the tracks with data between the cursor or within the loop. So I feel that we could add just a little bit of a high string here. So let's add the legato violin that we had here. Put that on minus 60 as well. Um, Missing some low end as well there in the end. So finally, let's add. Let's load an ensemble combo patch. Let's say the uh, Albion low strings. So I'm going to add this. String ensemble low legato. Going back to my slave. I haven't loaded anything there yet. So I need to do this. So I go to my low string legato. Albion. Uh, one, let's say legato patches, and I want to load my low strings octave legato, octave legato. Done. Now I can go back here, record something on that. So just record it and again, just for the sake of clarification, I would rename that to Spitfire Albion 1 String Ensemble 1 Low Legato. It didn't really catch my recording, so I have to do that again. Don't know why. Okay, let's do that again. 
seems it's not recording. What am I doing wrong? Maybe it's because of this auto punch. Just some little strings there and that's pretty much it so when we're done and say okay that's our track i'm happy again i go to song export stems and let's look at that again i want to select none first go all the way to the bottom and i want to export my ethnics my keys, my brass, and my strings short and my strings long. I want to import that into the track. Okay, render it. Coming. And this is also the idea of the template. So you can render out the full stereo, you can render out stems, you can render out the individual summing tiers, and you can even separate them more if you say, I really need the legatos and the shorts from the first violin separated. That's why you have individual audio returns from VE Pro, so you can render these out as well. You can actually do that as an example here. So, first of all, now we have the individual audio renders from the stems. We solo these, it should technically sound the same as before. Can mute the cello. All the flute. So that's the whole idea actually behind this whole thing. So when we unsolo. This is pretty much the whole concept of the quick load and V Pro combined template. And again, it's similar to, to Cubase and uh, so Studio One and Cubase, they actually use the same VE Pro frame. So both versions are available now. I'm leaving the link in the chat here and you'll find it also below the video description. Why is the link not there? There we go. So. In case you're interested, it is on Enterprise for uh, 59 euros in till, until mid of February. And yes, that's pretty much all for now. It's getting late, it's 2 a.m. here, so I should probably get some sleep. So we saved this. Again, what do you have to keep in mind you have even if you get this template it does not take all the work from you you still have to sit down and put your instruments in one thing that i have forgotten i also wanted to mention um although this full template is set up with contact that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to stick to that so let's say for example here on the strings ensemble 2 low legato I can jump into my V Pro frame, go to my low strings legato here, and for this I do have to open this. So I can click on this little arrow here next to contact 
and substitute this instrument to whatever I want to use. So for example, I could change that to the orchestral tool sign player. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is the MIDI channel that it's sitting on. So for example, let's say on the long strings, I'm changing this to sign player as well. So now I have my sign player here for low string ensemble long. And let's say I want to use Metropolis Arc here, the low strings, long, sustains. What I need to keep in mind when I do this and change the instrument from contact to... Oh, sorry, I didn't switch the cam. Okay, let me do this once more. I am on the strings low legato here. So going back to my V Pro frame, let's say, okay, since I already loaded this, uh, let's go to the short string here. So on this short string, I actually want to utilize sign instead of contact. So in the template, everything is set up with contact. But what you can do is you click on this little, on these two arrows next to the instrument. So in VE Pro, if you have this view, you need to look at the ex extended view or expand view, which is the letter F in VE Pro. So when you hit F, you will open up these uh, folders and instances. So you click on this little arrow here, and then you can select whatever instruments you want to use there. You could also redo this whole template with East West uh, Opus, for example. So you are not bound to using contact for this alone. So I could use the sign player here, and now I can load the low strings spiccato, for example. The only thing, and this is what I mentioned, the only thing you need to keep in mind is what MIDI channel is actually addressed here. So it's MIDI channel three. So when you change the instrument, you need to set this to MIDI channel three to be able to receive the data. That's the only thing you need to keep in mind when you switch instruments. If you keep loading into the contact instances that I provided, I did this for you. So all these channels are already set up to the correct MIDI channel. But if you change the instrument, then you will need to keep in mind to align that with the MIDI channel that the instrument is receiving from. So now when I go to my low short ensemble, Now I have sign on this channel instead of contact. So you are totally free to adapt that to your needs and to the plugins that you want to use. So just as a last example on the, let's take the string, let's take the second string library here. String library two. So, and for the violins legato here, I actually don't want to use contact. I want to use my east west strings. So I can go here, open Opus instead of my contact, go back here, and now I can load my Hollywood strings, for example. 18 violins, legato, let's load the, this one. And I am in luck because this is already on channel one, so I don't need to change anything. So back to my Cubase, if I go to my uh, ba -ba -ba, string library two, which we can see right now because it's switched off, it's turning that on, your string library two. So the first violin legato here is now Opus. You can also see here
So you're not bound to contact here. This is something that I wanted to show as well. And that shall conclude the overview. Um, in case there are any questions, feel free to leave them in the video below. Until February 15th, it's on reduced introductory price. It is a little more expensive because there's just a lot of more work involved. But this is really, if, if you're struggling setting up your V Pro template, uh, or if you intend to get V Pro utilized in your workflow, this is my attempt at making that entrance for you as easy as possible. And you can then look into how it's set up, how the routing is done, and hopefully take that as a starting point for you to make that your own and uh, adapt that to your needs. So you can also then later create your own returns, additional returns, do more MIDI channels, do more instruments, depending on what your system can handle. So that's pretty much it. Let's remove these. Have a little last playthrough of what we just listened to. And there's a lot of room, of course, to fill more of these. We didn't even look at the woodwinds. It's the same concept as in the brass. First library, second library, ensemble, solo and combos. And that's pretty much it. So what can I say? Thanks so much for watching and tuning in. I am going to head to bed now. Thanks for uh, being with me and check out either composingtutorials.online, every link is available there, or you can jump directly to store.composingtutorials.com. Thanks so much and I see you next time, which is probably later tonight because today we're taking a look at Orchestra Tools E. Gutesman solo library, solo violin library. So that's coming tonight. Cheers and you all have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.